A recent ruling from a U.S. district judge challenged the decision made by Judge Annalisa Torres in the Ripple case, which declared certain sales of XRP non-security offerings. By the way, Ripple has unlocked 400 million XRP from escrow, leaving the community stunned with a strange memo. Finally, will the presence of an extra judge give Ripple the victory? Stick with me till the end to find out more. If this sounds like something of much interest to you, be sure to check out this new video starting now. Hello everyone and welcome to our channel, where we talk about the latest updates on XRP and the cryptocurrency world in general. If this is your first time watching one of our videos, we happily send you a special welcome. We invite you to hit on the notification bell so you never miss another video. We are announcing that this channel has a giveaway of 200 XRP. To stand the chance of participating, all you have to do is simply subscribe to the channel, like this video and comment with the hashtag XRP, and the winner will be announced on the 15th of August. In a recent development, SDNY District Judge Jed Rakoff delivered a significant blow to the ruling in the XRP case. The judge's decision allows the SEC to proceed with its case against Terraform Labs and founder Du Quan, firmly rejecting the distinction made in the Ripple lawsuit between public and institutional sales. The court's decision on Terraform Labs' case comes to light thanks to John Reed Stark, who brought it to the public's attention via Twitter. Stark, a former SEC attorney in the agency's enforcement division, revealed Judge Rakoff's ruling on Terraform Labs' motion to dismiss the SEC's lawsuit against them. Recall that Terraform Labs and Du Quan's lawyers had asked the judge to dismiss the SEC's case. The lawyers cited the ruling in the Ripple case, as they argued that the assets in question are not securities under the purview of the SEC. However, the SEC replied by advocating against following Judge Annalisa Torres's reasoning in the Ripple case and expressed its intent to appeal the decision. In his ruling, Judge Rakoff denied issuer Terraform Labs' motion to dismiss the SEC lawsuit, asserting that the SEC has jurisdiction and a plausible claim that TerraUSD, the Anchor Protocol, and Luna may have violated securities laws. In an emphatic statement, Judge Rakoff directly challenged Judge Torres's ruling in the Ripple case, expressing his disagreement with the approach taken in that judgment. He criticized the distinction between public and institutional sales, which the Ripple case considered. In his view, the Howey test does not differentiate between purchasers based on the origin of their coins, as all purchasers could reasonably expect that they will profit based on the defendant's efforts. The judge's ruling also challenged the Major Questions Doctrine, a Supreme Court ruling that limits regulatory agencies from exceeding their mandate. Some crypto defendants, including Coinbase, have used the argument against the SEC. Judge Rakoff dismissed this objection, stating that the cryptocurrency industry does not have the same vast economic and political significance as other regulated industries. To emphasize the significance of this decision, Stark noted that Judge Jed Rakoff is regarded as one of the most respected securities law jurists in the U.S. federal court system. The former SEC attorney also highlighted Rakoff's reputation for employing an independent approach. David Schwartz, Ripple's CTO, expressed his reservations about the court's ruling, noting that the decision seemed to rely on the unique properties of Terraform Lab scheme rather than the general characteristics of cryptocurrencies. Schwartz pointed out that the court's rejection of the Ripple case did not appear to be solely based on a fundamental disagreement with its reasoning. Instead, it hinges on the differences in the facts between the two cases. He offered two possible interpretations of the court's stance. One instance is that the court disagreed with the Ripple decision because it applied additional tests not part of the Howey test. Therefore, it indicates that the court might not use or follow the Ripple ruling in this case. According to Schwartz, this is the worst case for supporters of Torres's decision. The second interpretation is that the court disagreed with the argument that it should follow the Ripple decision in the Terraform Labs case due to peculiarities in the Terraform Labs lawsuit, not because the Ripple decision directly implicates the Howey factors. In this case, despite the specific facts in the Ripple case justifying the distinction between public and institutional sales, the court suggests that these facts might not be applicable in the Terraform Labs case. Schwartz noted that this would be the best case for supporters of Torres's ruling. Amid the recent development, XRP has broken below the 70 cents price territory. XRP closed below the 70 cents psychological support yesterday for the first time since July 13th. The asset is now trading for 69 cents, down 2% over the past 24 hours.
Please, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit that notification bell to be the first person to get more updates about the latest happenings as regards to XRP. Ripple has unlocked XRP tokens from its escrow wallets as part of its monthly escrow execution exercise. However, one of the escrow execution transactions involving 400 million XRP contains a particularly strange memo, sparking curiosity among community members about its origin and the entity responsible for it. Well-known XRP community figure Mr. Intuitive first called attention to the enigmatic memo in a recent tweet. The community influencer conveyed his surprise and astonishment regarding the message's content. The memo was attached to an escrow execution transaction today at midnight. The transaction involved 400 million XRP, currently valued at $275 million. While the transaction appeared like an ordinary escrow execution, the memo stood out. It reads, Sedan is now Lumbo, Tepid Jam is now Hot Jam, DAI's rat is caught in a mouse trap. Now, will Jeremy H's broken dock and hacked Twitter account be fixed? Will the party become a proper party? Will the revolution be televised? As a side note, David, is the secret sauce a tepid sauce or a hot sauce? While the entire message is open to numerous interpretations, it does allude, in part, to happenings within the XRP community. The memo calls attention to attorney Jeremy Hogan's recently compromised Twitter account. As reported last week, scammers hacked Hogan's Twitter account to promote a bogus XRP giveaway on July 24th. The memo asks if attorney Jeremy Hogan could recover his hacked Twitter account. This question comes a few days late, as Hogan recovered his account on July 29th. The message on the memo also directs a question to Ripple's chief technology officer, David Schwartz. Is the secret sauce a tepid sauce or a hot sauce, it asks. The enigmatic nature of the memo has elicited varied community reactions, considering the fact that it could have come from a Ripple employee. Notably, the write-up style is similar to posts made by individuals within the XRP community who call themselves Riddlers. A close look at the address responsible for initiating the escrow transaction reveals that the individual behind the address has been involved in messages like this since 2019. A similar memo was seen in an escrow transaction involving 1 billion XRP on April 1, 2019. The XRP community is too stunned to guess who is behind the messages. However, some proponents already point to David Schwartz. Renowned for his jest and ability to connect socially with the community, Schwartz finds himself caught in the middle of the event. However, the most plausible explanation is that the memo might not have come from anyone within Ripple. It is important to note that anyone, regardless of whether they work for Ripple or not, can initiate an escrow finish or escrow cancel transaction supposing the conditions are met. Considering this, it is reasonable to suggest that the memo was written by an XRP community member seeking to attract the community's attention. However, this remains speculation without further information on the subject. Now to the big question of the day, will the presence of an extra judge give Ripple the victory? Please, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit that notification bell to be the first person to get more updates about the latest happenings as regards to XRP. A former SDNY attorney, Douglas Samuel Zalkind, has filed a notice of appearance on behalf of Ripple Labs in the company's legal tussle against the SEC. Seasoned lawyer James K. Fillon shared the development in a tweet yesterday. The motion was filed yesterday in the Southern District of New York. In the motion filed in the Southern District of New York yesterday, Zalkind indicated an interest in being associated with Debevoise and Plimpton LLP, one of the legal firms representing Ripple Labs in the legal battle. Notably, Zalkind is a litigation partner at Debevoise and Plimpton Law Firm. It bears mentioning that Zalkind is an expert on internal and government investigations and white-collar defenses. He got his education from the University of Pennsylvania and Cornell Law School. The lawyer majors in defending corporate and individual clients in criminal and regulatory enforcement matters. Before becoming a litigation partner at Debevoise and Plimpton, Zalkind was an assistant U.S. attorney in SDNY. Notably, he led multiple investigations and prosecutions in cases such as securities offenses, political corruption, foreign bribery, and cybercrime. Based on Zalkin's interesting CV, XRP community members have expressed excitement over his intention to join Ripple's legal team. However, his filing to join Ripple's legal team also stirred confusion within the XRP community. To clear this confusion, crypto law founder attorney John Deaton clarified that Zalkin would replace Lisa Zornberg one of the lawyers who left Ripple's legal team. 
According to reports, New York Mayor Eric Adams appointed Zornberg as chief counsel. Consequently, the move left a void in Ripple's legal team, which Zalkind is attempting to fill. Zalkin's motion to appear on behalf of Ripple comes when the SEC is signaling plans to appeal Judge Annalisa Torres' summary judgment. The SEC has expressed disappointment with the judge's ruling regarding Ripple's sales to retail investors. In the ruling, Judge Torres found that Ripple's programmatic XRP sales on exchanges are not security offerings. Several legal experts have speculated that the SEC will appeal her decision on Ripple's sales to retail investors. Furthermore, there is also the possibility of the parties reaching an agreement to settle the lawsuit. As reported, Judge Sarah Nedburn ordered the parties to select three dates for a possible settlement conference. Interestingly, Zalkin's legal expertise will be useful to Ripple in the lawsuit, irrespective of any option the SEC chooses. So we come to the end of this video guys, if you enjoyed it, please make sure you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. This really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Also, you can help enlighten others just like you have been enlightened by sharing this video to as many people as possible. Let's get this news everywhere guys. If you are a true cryptocurrency fan, don't miss any of our content. See you tomorrow to talk about the latest news that concerns us all as a community.